Okay, so shit hit the fan and now we're here. Maybe it was your fault. Maybe the world screwed you over. But we need to figure a way out of this and even better to turn things around. By the end of this video, not only will we come up with a solution together, but we'll restore your confidence that things will eventually get better. This video will be here waiting for you anytime you need it. Are you ready for this? Here are 15 things to do immediately if your life starts falling apart. Welcome to Alux, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. First up, health, fitness, rest, reset. We experience reality through the chemicals we have running through our body. Large-scale academic studies show that physical health is significantly related to life satisfaction and happiness across different age groups. You just, you gotta trust the freaking process here. Get yourself to a gym. Don't push yourself too hard, just get your blood flowing a little bit. You spend most of your time sitting down. From the bed to the kitchen chair, to the seat in your car, to the chair at the office, and back home sitting on the couch. All of that coupled with a diet of deep fried or butter heavy foods. This is why you have a hard time falling asleep. Why your back hurts. Why you don't like the way you look in the mirror and why your skin has all those spots. Since your body is mostly dormant, it struggles to manage the chemicals released when stressful things happen. Your body needs movement. It needs blood flow to flush those stress hormones out. Getting yourself physically tired will quiet the mind. Your body will begin the process of fixing itself and making you strong again. You'll fall asleep faster. You'll wake up feeling rested and begin the biological reset process. And this happens much more quickly and efficiently when you refine your sleep hygiene. Humans are creatures of habit. We live life in cycles, both big and small. Going to sleep and waking up at the same time every day is one of the smallest adjustments you can make, but one that will have a huge impact on how well you function. You'll stop feeling tired all the time. Your mind will defog, actually allowing you to see things more clearly. Money problems, business problems, romantic problems, academic problems, and almost all other problems have one core element in common. The defining solution, which is the mind of the person going through the challenge. The biggest insight here is this. The mind cannot do what it's supposed to do if the body isn't cooperating. And in this case, figure out how to make the pieces fall into place. So you solve the fitness and rest parts first, and then watch how things begin to make a lot more sense. And you'll want to accelerate this process even more. Get out of the house, get some sun on your face, and put yourself out in nature. You're not getting enough sunshine. You're not spending enough time around the trees. You haven't breathed in clean air in months, if not years. You haven't felt the salted sea or ocean breeze on your face. You stopped running barefoot on the grass when you were like 12 years old. You probably breathe heavily going down a flight of stairs. These are easy, cheap, or free to fix. Just start going for walks. Seriously, it's really that easy. Walking is like the vegetable of exercise anyway. You'll never regret adding more to your life. But it doesn't have to be boring either. For the first time ever, be a tourist in your city. Go to its edges. Find its hidden gems. Every city's got them. Walk through a forest and you'll immediately see how your body signals to you that it wants more of this. It's wired into our DNA. But since your diet is so screwed up from prioritizing convenience over everything else, your body is very likely missing key elements that are meant to regulate the feelings you're experiencing right now. How's this for a wake-up call? A 2018 study in Japan identified a clear correlation between depression and other mental health struggles to a deficiency of iron. Turns out, the majority of respondents were able to fix their depression just by increasing their iron intake. Now, obviously, this isn't the case for everyone experiencing depression, but if you've never had mental health issues before and now you do, Get yourself to a doctor, get your blood work done, and have them recommend natural supplements. Not every bout of depression needs heavy pharmaceuticals. 
fish oil and iron for depression, vitamin D for immunity and mood, magnesium for muscle, nerve, and stress, probiotics for gut health, vitamin B for energy and focus. Turns out other people have gone through similar feelings as you are right now, and as a society, we've been able to provide solutions. This is your wake-up call to make use of the years of research that went into solving these problems and put them to good use for personal gain. With your body chemically reset, it's now time to focus on the big elephant in the room. You need to stop digging, okay? Whatever it is that got you into this mess, you can't get a different outcome by doing the same stuff. Stop digging. Stop the bleeding. No matter how harsh it sounds, cut it out. If a deal isn't profitable, take the L, walk away, stop the bleeding. If you've been spending more than you're earning, stop spending. If you're struggling with debt, don't borrow more money to pay off the old debt. If they left you, stop calling them and stalking their social media. This is what getting your shit together actually looks like. You go from autopilot to being decisive with your actions. If something doesn't lead to a measurable positive return on the metric that matters, don't do it. A trap we often see people falling into is trying to make themselves feel better with momentary pleasure. People who are struggling financially would actually go on a shopping spree because they're trying to convince themselves they still got it. They're in denial and looking for that quick dopamine hit to distract them from reality, only to end up feeling even worse about their situation when the dopamine wears off 30 minutes later. This is dumb, okay? Don't do that. If you can't pay rent, don't buy the plane tickets. Whatever lifestyle you had before this point is what got you here. Your ability to make decisions got you here. And here isn't working anymore, is it? So stop with the shitty decisions and stick to only the handful of things you know for certain will provide you with a positive return. Slap yourself if you have to. This is your life we're talking about, and since it's not going well, you need to stop digging here. And while you're at it, don't start anything new. Focus on the essentials for the time being. The goal is to survive and wait it out. Time provides clarity. Time reveals more information. Time allows for certain actions to play through. There's no reason to run around like a headless chicken if you cannot directly impact the outcome. So wait it out. Follow the rules we've already mentioned. If you're doing better physically and you stop the bleeding, by now you should be able to see the light at the end of the tunnel. You'll be tempted to solve one problem with an external solution. You'll be tempted to risk more in order to make back what you've lost. Someone will try to take advantage of your situation. When they dangle that new opportunity with high returns and little investment, don't fall for it. You're lacking resources, so you need to be very careful with how you spend the little you do have. You can't spend your way out of this hole. You just focus on new things that measurably work and do them over and over and over again. You're now in the grind phase, my friend. If your actions have a positive return, your problem will be solved through volume and time. So focus on the essentials. Keep yourself fed and ignore all the noise around you. You'll get through this. Just, again, trust the process. Start a daily routine that jogs your mind and keeps your life predictable. You're out here going through life winging your schedule every single day. And this causes tremendous amounts of stress. Unpredictability is what got you here in the first place because if you could have predicted this accurately, well, you're smart enough to not have made this play. So here's the solution. First, a predictable routine that removes the need for your brain to make decisions outside of what's driving you forward. Secondly, input of wisdom that provides context and frameworks to navigate what you're going through. And thirdly, a disciplined grind that will transform your newfound wisdom into measurable progress. The day is one before 1 p.m. The rest of your day, you either choose to make even more progress or you use it to keep yourself in fighting shape. So how do you apply this? Well, first you wake up, brush your teeth, shower, do what you must. Make your coffee, tea, or a smoothie, dealer's choice. But first, okay, drink a glass of water first. 
train your brain, listen to a podcast, meditate, or use professional tools like an app that's designed to bring actionable steps to deal with your problems. Journal if you feel like it. And once you're fired up, create a priority list of what you'll accomplish today in order of impact, and then proceed to tackle it head on. The two biggest tasks on your list will be done before 1 p.m. You'll have made real, tangible progress. The only difference between losers and winners is that winners know a routine where they can make small progress on a daily basis is the reason why they win. The losers think they can just outsmart the system, and they can't. If you lack the routine, the mental jogging, the clear trajectory, Aluxer, you will lose. Smart people know this, and they use the Alux app to do all three of them. So go to alux.com app, put it on your phone, and make it your morning habit with your coffee. It fixes specifically this part of your life, and it takes under one week for you to realize just how freaking life-changing it is. With your newfound clarity and direction getting out of the hole, you need to feel safe. And that's where your support system comes in. So reach out to your friends. True friendships are especially valuable in times of struggle. You need people that you can talk to. If not for advice, at least people that you can vent to as a sounding board. This is a tool you have in your arsenal, and your friends are just waiting for you to allow them to be there for you. Stop with the superficial nonsense of just sharing the wins. Hard times create depth. That's how friends go on to become best friends. They've been through some stuff together. You want to have people in your life that have your back. You want to be someone who has their back as well. Being a lone wolf sounds good until you realize the pack is not only safer, but they eat more consistently. The fact you're feeling lonely going through this right now just means you've done a lousy job at valuing the relationships you have and didn't make having the right friends the priority that it truly is. The rich use this for profit all the time. They make each other richer and keep each other from going broke. If you do it right, this practice translates to all other parts of your life. But there's one thing that just cannot be done by anyone else, and that is to have an honest conversation with yourself about what got you here. Because look, okay, other people could provide you with answers or solutions, but you need to figure out what happened for yourself. And this is a single player quest. As much as other people can try to help you, they can try to shed light on certain things or situations. This right here is between you and you. Block everything out, take a step back, and watch the replay of how things unfolded. Try to identify the inflection points, the red flags you've ignored, and the bad calls you've made. Your life doesn't fall off because of one bad decision. Most single bad decisions can be reversed or outworked. Life falls apart when you have multiple bad calls, one after the other, so this exercise serves as a wake-up call on your judgment. You're not as smart as you think you are. You're not as hardworking as you say you are. You're not as committed as you say you are. You probably expected other people to get you where you wanted to go, so you just kicked back and now you're paying the price. People will only help you if by helping you, they're helping themselves. More often than not, they'll prioritize helping themselves over helping you. This is why you can't take your hands off the wheel. So ask yourself, where did you mess up? What did you see but ignore? Why did you ignore it? Did you double down on the mistake and why? If this were to happen again, what would be a superior course of action? And what is one belief that you used to hold before this and what do you think now? These questions will allow you to break down your past and actually find the gold. You can't change the past, but you can extract value from it. Honestly, this is quite literally the only way to alchemize the shitty calls that we've made in the past and turn them into anything worthwhile. Don't let your mistakes haunt you. Use them to propel you forward. Once things become clear, well, it's time to get to the chopping board. Let go of the dead weight. Your life now sucks because the bad calls from your past well, they had consequences, and some of those consequences are still around. As hard as it might seem, cut them off. 
If you hired too many people, you need to make the tough call and let them go. If you got back with your abusive ex, it's time to choose yourself and let them go. If you poured too much money into a hobby, you need to stop. The person who got you into the bad deal, they're now out of your life. It's cheaper, from a money and time perspective, to take the loss now and move on than it is to keep them around trying to recoup whatever you lost through them. Without all the weight, you'll be nimble in your actions. You'll be light. Your overhead will be low. It won't take much time to see things getting better, but you can't get there if you're carrying all of these leeches on your shoulder. Sometimes they're ill-intended. Sometimes they'll be innocent bystanders. When you break things down, everyone is responsible for their own lives. Let them go. Allow them to move on. You need a moment to breathe. You're the sinking ship trying to save everyone else at your own expense. Put on your oxygen mask first and then take care of everyone else. It'll be painful for both you and them. But if it's objectively the right call, make it. And eventually you'll find your rhythm. They'll find theirs. And don't look back. Along the way, you lost some parts of yourself that made you enjoy the process, so now it's time to rekindle that. So revisit an old source of creative happiness. The mistake you made is to tie your happiness to a certain outcome. The second mistake you made is having that outcome depend on other people or have it barely in your control. That is how you end up miserable. There's this lie that you should find something that makes you happy. That's bullshit, okay? You have to make yourself happy. You do not find happiness, you create it. The same way you make yourself go to the gym, despite that voice in your head telling you to hit the couch. This willpower muscle atrophies over time. It gets weaker. So the same way you grab a pair of dumbbells and do curls to expand your biceps is the same way you need to flex that happiness muscle. You need to train it. Here's a golden nugget for you. You are happy when your life is comprised of things that make you happy. Somewhere along the line, society has tricked us into a culture of productivity. You should work hard. You should think hard. Everything became hard, and so did your life. You traded the things that made you happy for things that were hard. And hard things lead to other hard things, unless you're aware of what's happening. And most people are not that aware. So revisit the things that you remember from your past that brought you happiness. Re-listen to old songs, re-watch your favorite movies, find a book that sparked joy. Do what used to make you happy because chances are it will again. And Alexa, if you've gone through the things we've mentioned so far on this list and there's still something that feels deeply wrong inside of you, then get professional help. There are four people that can get you back to the surface. Better said, four professions. Psychiatrists, nutritionists, and doctors. Therapists, priests, and professional coaches. Whatever it is you're dealing with, these people have seen hundreds, if not thousands of people go through the same thing and have identified the patterns that allow the individual to overcome the obstacle you're facing. You don't pay them for the work, but for the expertise they bring. And not all of them are created equally. It'll usually take a few until you find one that clicks for you. Your life didn't fall apart overnight. It's actually the outcome of years and years that allowed this to happen. So the solution will not be one that you can implement overnight and rid yourself of the problem. No, otherwise everything we've mentioned so far would have worked. The more you zoom out, the more you realize your life isn't as special or as different from others as you make it seem. So what worked for them will statistically work for you if you're willing to commit to it. You can lose the weight. You can get into shape. You can heal the trauma. You can stop the voices in your head. You can find peace. You can solve money. And you can find purpose if you have the right guidance. Millions of people subscribe to our channel because of how transformative and valuable our free content is. For the past decade, our philosophy here at ALUX has been the following. 
You can have anything you want in life, but let's get you rich first. Because it takes getting rich to afford the luxury of dealing with everything else without the financial pressure. So, we built an app that helps people do just that. To put their life in order from money and wealth, to physical and mental health, to intellect, relationships, and emotions. The app is available at alux.com app, and over 100,000 people swear it's changed their life for the better, and we believe it can help you too. It's like having a personal coach in your pocket helping you navigate life. It's the best investment you'll ever make. Get a yearly subscription to the app and just watch it happen. Change the difficulty settings on your life. Here's a breakthrough idea that our generation just doesn't fully comprehend. Your life has different difficulty settings based on what you want to achieve. Sure, if you want to be a billionaire, it'll require you to play the money game at an expert level. It's not going to be easy. If you want to have under 6% body fat, it'll require you to play the fitness game at an expert level. But if you just want to be happy and at peace, look my friend, those are not expert level objectives. We're sure you've met poor people in the past who are plenty happy and content. Social media has tricked you into thinking that everyone should have a penthouse, a Lambo, to travel to the Maldives and Carchevel, to buy bottles at the club, to fly private, to buy a Von Cleef and Cartier bracelet or necklace while having a hot partner without doing any real work or even the bare minimum. All of this adds pressure. It makes you feel like you're less than you are. It sets an almost unattainable bar for you. So you feel worthless because you don't have all of those things. But that's not where your value lies. Love your partner. Feel loved. Hug your parents. Get a good night's sleep. Go to the cinema. Ride a bike. Visit your grandparents and cook dinner with your mom. Drink a beer with your dad and talk about something other than money. Take your kid out for ice cream. This is the game of life on easy mode. The biggest return for your buck you'll ever get. It'll fill the hole inside of you that none of these other things ever would. The biggest lie you've been told is that you need all of these possessions to win the game of life. This is a stupid rule invented by people who bought stuff to feel like they're better than everyone else. Because even though they got there, they still feel empty inside, so they needed to cling on to some external sense of worth to justify it. Just take a moment to think this through, Aluxer. What does it mean for you to win at life? How will you measure it? What do you optimize for? Once you figure this out, make sure you don't lose sight of the forest because of the trees. Grieve. Feel your feelings and allow them to exit the body. Look, we know, okay, life is hard and you can't be showing weakness. So what did you do? You bottled everything up. You locked it in a box deep inside of you. You never talked about it. You did that over and over and over again, and now the room cannot hold anymore, and it wants to burst open. Your strength got you here, but it's a different kind of strength that will take you to where you want to go. So give yourself permission to grieve and process. What happened to you was not your fault. Feel your feelings. Let them out. Let them pass through your body as uncomfortable as it might seem, because the alternative is to let them grow stagnant and fester inside of you, spilling out at all of the worst moments. If you're the creative type, you can externalize these feelings through your work. Write it out, paint it out, journal it out, put it in your music, code it out if you have to. Once you're able to do it, you'll have a way of ridding yourself of all of the emotional baggage that you've been carrying with you. Everything that's been dragging you down below the surface. Emotions are meant to be processed, not bottled up. For even the finest wine on the Titanic must taste worse than vinegar by now. Time doesn't heal anything if you don't use time to work through it. But there's a healthy way to do that and an unhealthy one. Don't drown your sorrows into anything that would make it worse. Because as much as TV shows try to glamorize alcohol, drugs, and other escapist mechanisms, stay away from them, Aluxer. Have you ever talked to a homeless person and asked them how they ended up homeless? You'd be shocked to learn how many of them were productive members of society at one point. 
Then they made a couple of bad calls, and instead of getting their shit together, they looked for moments of peace through pills or at the bottom of a bottle. You get addicted to the illusion of peace that these substances bring to you because it's only an illusion. Reality doesn't stop for you, and the consequences of your past actions are still there festering no matter how much you ignore them. Like a dragon that wasn't killed in its infancy, it grows stronger every day. By this point, not only has the dragon grown unimaginably big, but your addiction is looking to cash in. Every addict will tell you that the momentary illusion of peace has an unimaginably great cost in terms of family, opportunity, and self-esteem. The cost is that you're trading most of your future for a moment of quiet. When both the dragon and the addiction come to settle their debts, you're done. That's how you end up homeless and purposeless. This single idea should make you realize just how real life is. That you can't be ignoring the obvious dragon and chasing escapism through substances. If you stay clear of that, you do have a shot of turning things around. Zoom out. If life has taught us anything, it's this. Zoomed in, life is a tragedy. Zoomed out, life is a comedy. You've been through hard times before and you pulled through. Have the confidence that you can do the same thing again. 10 years from now, you'll look at this moment as just another chapter in your book. It always amuses us when we think back to our middle school days where you had a test coming up and you were so scared to fail it. And at that point in time, all you could think about was, oh my God, what if you got your first F and you didn't get into the school you wanted to get into and you felt like your life was over? Well, how do you feel about those moments right now? You laugh about them, right? Because things turned out just fine. You're in the middle of the storm now. Life is hard. This is what hard feels like. You're supposed to go through this right now so you can laugh about it later. It also helps to put things into perspective. Look at all you've accomplished so far. 12 bad months do not wipe away the progress you've made in the last decade. So give yourself some more credit and shift the narrative. This particular struggle is meant to unlock something in you that you didn't know you had. And finally, use this as the origin story for who you're becoming. This is your hero's journey, and every hero goes through this. There's an excitement, a rise. The hero thinks it's gonna be easy, but it isn't. They overcome some initial challenges and build confidence, but then things happen. The dark side seems to be winning here. The hero is captured, impending doom is ahead, and this is where you are in the story. You've seen enough movies, read enough stories to know that this is not where your story is supposed to end. The hero pulls themselves together by the bootstraps, finally understands the words of their mentor, and is able to use that to defeat the evil forces and come out victorious. This victory is what awaits you. Use the wisdom, the tools, the teachings of your mentors and win this. Because one day, this struggle you're facing right now will just make your TED Talk more interesting. Some people would throw in the towel. Some people wouldn't have made it as far as you did. But you are not some people. You actually get a second chance at this. Objectively, it's a hard situation to solve. But you've got a good head on your shoulders and time on your hands. All of it is figureoutable. You already have the puzzle pieces, or worst case scenario, you know what pieces are missing. So start solving it. This is not the end of your story, and we cannot wait to hear from you in the comments about how your story unfolds. We believe in you. And since you took this seriously and watched this extremely long video until the very end, we saved a bonus just for you. You already have the solution, it's just that you don't like it. And if we're gonna be real here, mostly it's because it involves effort. There are times in your life where you can solve problems by using leverage. Leverage means money, connections, a certain tool or someone's specific knowledge. But sometimes the problem at hand is one brute force effort. The problem you're facing will require X amount of hours of effort to solve it and it's you that has to put in these hours. 
this is actually a blessing, despite maybe not feeling that way. The fact that you alone have the power to solve this means nobody else can keep you from doing it. Inside of your head, there's a tiny voice in the past years that's gotten complacent. The gold nugget we saved for those of you still around for this bonus is that you are not the voice in your head. You are the person making things happen. The voice in your head is just a spectator watching you and doubting what you're doing. So put that sucker in their place and get to work. You already have the solution. There's no time to lose, so start chipping away at it. If you're the type of person that's meant for more in this life, that won't let the current situation keep them down, if you're the type of person who will find victory no matter what life throws at them, write the word victory in the comments. Let's see how many of you aren't ready to throw in the towel. Come back to this video once you've defeated your dragon. We will be eagerly awaiting an update to your comments.